Hi, my name's Nico, and I'm a bookaholic. Hello, and welcome to my channel. Yes, this is another book haul because. Uh, I basically just do a book haul video when I have too many books in the book haul part of my shelf, which is just off screen here. It's also like double the size of a normal shelf and I stack them and whenever it gets too full, it's time to do a book haul. So um, I, I told uh, Andrew who just did a book haul uh, that came out on Monday, which I'll link down below. I told him mine was worse than his, if that makes him feel better, because I also have been trying to slow down, but you know... I, we have the channel in our Discord called Book Buyers Anonymous for a reason, so I figured I'd harken back to that with the intro, but uh, let's get in and talk about it. Um, it's just, gonna, it kind of keeps happening, you know. Maybe I'll slow down someday, maybe not, we'll have to see. But uh, the first thing I want to mention is that I did get, uh, I have a whole stack over here uh, that I did get for practically free uh, because Evie from She Was Only Evie was unhauling some books, and so I uh, gave everyone in the Discord first crack at them. So uh, the first one there is Green Rider by Kristen Britton. Uh, this is one I, I'd been aware of and had been meaning to read for some time. It's like basically uh, a woman is like traveling, and then all of a sudden a Green Rider, which is like a messenger for the king, and they're like legendary messengers, uh, basically like dies and passes the torch to her to continue the mission. Uh, and so it's one that I, it's been around for a bit and one I've been interested in and I keep my half price books always has like later books that are part of this world or part of the series but never the first one uh, so I jumped on that pretty quickly uh, so that I can finally read that and then next up we have which I'm super excited about the entire Death Gate cycle so this is one I've been wanting to read and I, some people have mentioned it lately uh, and it's just, yeah, all seven books. For one, two, these look like practically brand new, like in great condition, too. Uh, I'm not going to name them all off, but you can look up the Deathgate cycle. First book is Dragonwing. This is Wise and Hickman, and um, I, I, I'm still debating on whether or not I can call myself a big fan, because I loved Dragonlance Chronicles back in the day, and I've reread it, I'm actually rereading it now, and I still really, really enjoy it. But then I read the, the Dark Sword trilogy, and I hated it a lot. So, Deathgate Cycle might be the, the tiebreaker. Uh, that's, it's not Dragonlance and it's not Dark Sword, so it's something else, so we'll have to see how that goes. But I'm really excited. I've never read that one. I've read mostly just the Dragonlance ones, and then, like I said, the Dark Sword ones. So I'm really excited to do that. And then I also got uh, Anxious People by Frederick Bachman. And this is not at all, the, I think this is like literary fiction, or I guess. I don't know what genre it, it's classified in. But I remember a while back, this was making the rounds on BookTube. Uh, and even a lot of people who do a lot of fantasy content were talking about it and just how uh, this author is really good in this particular book. Uh, and it's one, like I said, I was getting the books for very little cost, so I'm like, why not? I'll give it a try when I feel like trying something different. Uh, so this is definitely not like a normal book for me. But I read the first like couple pages, and it seemed interesting. Uh, so that'll be, that'll be interesting to check out. So those ones, uh, so they're still in the hall, but like I didn't really spend a lot of money on them. Um, so that's, that's how I'm justifying it to myself. We'll move on next to some hardcovers. Uh, and a lot of these are, oh, actually almost everything I have here. I don't think I have anything I bought. Mm, well, that's a lie. I do have a couple that are new that we'll get to. Uh, but almost all of these are from either Book Outlet, uh, which is not good for someone who has... Uh, Bookaholism, book, book haul. I, I, I've taken, I've taken the joke too far, but it's not good when you have a book buying problem, because uh, they always have lots of books that you can find. Uh, but when I saw that they had Empire of Brass by Tad Williams, which is book two in the new Austin R trilogy, I already have Witchwood Crown, which you should be able to see up here, and I actually got that and the Heart of What Was Lost. Uh, both of uh, Witchwood Crown might have been. That might have been from half price books, but I think it was Book Outlet. But I got both of those from Book Outlet, and then I was able to get book two. I mean, this is still a pretty new book, and, like, once again, this is, like, new. You know, it's got the dot, but I, I, I could not pass that up. And that this book is actually what prompted uh, the entire Book Outlet order that I got that one from, because I specifically wanted to get that, so. Uh, next up, we have 
Which this is one that the uh, it looked pretty cool from the cover. It's for the killing of kings by Howard Andrew Jones. So this one, the premise also is pretty interesting. A lot of times when I'm looking at used books or I'm looking on like book outlet, at first, if it's not something I specifically recognize, I'm looking. Does the cover look interesting? And then I'll read more about it. And this is one. There's like two uh, countries that have been at war, but they they're they're keeping like kind of a barely stable peace because of the fact that one side has this magic sword that's supposed to like have been prophesied to be the doom of the other so as long as they have that sword they're afraid to you know fully commit because they might die but then they find out it's a fake and it's not the real sword so it just kind of sounded like something different it's also it's a pretty short book uh so you know i like getting some short books every now and then it's super helpful uh, then we had, once again, a sequel, a hardcover, like, like new sequel to a book I have. Uh, this is Venge War by Kevin J. Anderson. I got the, the first one of this, which is Spine of the Dragon, mostly because the cover looked cool, and I saw Andrew get it. And then they have the second book uh, as well, which actually I like this cover even more. So it's just the sword, and I don't always care for the sword covers, but I don't know, something about this, like the sword in the cave, looks pretty cool. So this is another sequel. That's just like a given. I still need to read the first one. It is going to happen uh, at some point. I always have too many books. So then next up we have, I got these because they were pretty cheap. Uh, it's the, the 25th anniversary edition of Sword of Shannara and then the Voyage of the Jural uh, Shannara trilogy. So I actually have a really old, like beat up, no dust jacket copy of this already, uh, which I won't, it's, it's not like horribly beat up, but it's just definitely more used looking than this one. Uh, which is the 25th, so new. So when I found these two, I, I've been meaning to to go back and read Shannara, and I'm just a sucker for nice, pretty hardcover books. So those both, I got at half price books, I was pretty surprised uh, to find those there. And I, I do have the heritage of Shannara uh, with the dust jacket too, so I, I did, I'm not going to lie, I mostly bought this 25th anniversary edition uh, for, the, for the dust jacket, because I have the trilogy, it's not, I don't think it was the 25th, um, but, I mean, it was in hardcover before the 25th, so I don't know if there's any difference. But I guess I'll find out. And then, I haven't even actually opened these yet. But I couldn't pass up when I saw, uh, when they did the Kickstarter for the, um, that's, which, which leather bound even was it? I think it was one of the Stormlight books. I don't have any of the, the Brandon Sanderson leather bounds that want them, though. But when they did the Kickstarter, they did a physical release of Way of Kings Prime, and Don Shard didn't realize it was going to be this small. Uh, and then they had leftovers, so they put them up just on for sale for leftovers, and neither one of these are going to be reprinted, not because they're like limited edition, they were just basically like leftovers, is my understanding. But yeah, I haven't even opened. I should have opened this. This is now an unboxing. Um, I read about half of Way of Kings Prime. Um, on my phone before I had a Kindle, and uh, it was really interesting, and it's something I wanted to finish at some point, but this, uh, my only problem is it doesn't have a dust jacket, but I like the symbol. It's still a pretty high-quality book. It has the name, a little Sanderson Curiosities thing, but I mean, for something that is not even like a necessarily a real book, I feel like they still really uh, took care to make it nice. And then, like I said, I am a little disappointed. Um, about how small Don Shard is, which I'm going to very carefully use a screwdriver to break the plastic. This is now an ASMR book opening video. I'm branching out, guys. All new kinds of content. Um, the same thing. I actually bought the ebook of this because you could originally only get this with the Kickstarter. This is really tiny, but it's, it's a pretty cool looking book. So I don't know where this is going to go. Uh, this will probably end up like sitting, you know, displayed on the shelf or something. Uh, but it'll go well. The other one I have, which is slightly bigger, but I also do have the Heart, uh, Emperor's Soul, which I found at Half Price Books for like $4, which makes no sense because it's a UK only edition and retails at more. But uh, so I got my couple of smaller Sanderson curiosities. So uh, it was just one of those things. I do eventually want to get the leather bound books. I haven't participated in any of the Kickstarters because they're just, they're expensive. And everything I've seen, the quality looks worth it. But uh, I, I struggle to get myself to spend that much money. So I'm going to convince my wife to like slowly get them for me as presents when they go back in stock. 
All right, moving on, because I feel like I've been talking too long already. We've got a lot of books to go left. Uh, we have Duskfall by Christopher Hillsberg. Uh, it's book one of the Chaos Queen Quintet. Say that five times fast. That's fine. Chaos Queen Quintet. Uh, and this is, like, I'm not entirely sure what this is, but it looked kind of cool. Uh, and it, it's, like, a, it's supposed to be, like, a dark fantasy Jason Bourne. Like, somebody wakes up and doesn't really remember their past and, like, actually, and... That's a really strange description, and I'm here for it. So I saw that strange description, and I figured I'm gonna I'm gonna give that one a shot. Uh, next up, we have Blood of the Four by Christopher Golden and Tim Levin. I've never heard of either of these authors. This is another one where I thought like that's kind of a pretty cover, and I read, and this is about like a, uh, a really religious empire. Basically, the tagline was like uh, all. Everyone's a slave. Some people are slaves to the gods, but most people are slaves to everyone else. So it's like really hierarchical uh, religious empire, and there's a princess who's like vying for the ultimate power uh, that may make her a god or destroy the whole kingdom. So this is another one of just kind of the miscellaneous books I end up getting from Book Outlet every time because I just kind of look through for my order minimum and uh, look for things that seem interesting. But I then got, because um, they had both. And these are kind of like, they're kind of like, almost like silly old school covers, especially this one a little bit with the twirl. And it's got a blurb from Janny Wirtz, which I thought was interesting. Uh, but this is A Conjuring of Assassins and Illusion of Thieves, which one of these is the first one. This is the first one. <laughs> I remember. But this is, I, I'd seen these on Book Outlet before and hadn't got them, but then I ended up going back for them at some point. So it's like magic is outlawed. Uh, there's a courtesan who's banished. And then she has to put together a crew to help this noble called the Shadow Lord, who's apparently like the good guy, though. So that was kind of interesting. Uh, and so they're, they're just kind of like bright. Also, like, especially this first one is pretty short. So uh, a couple of things. Interesting cover, interesting description, blurb from an author. I like, that's a win. So the other thing, I can't, I, I, I don't seem to be able to stop buying. Now, this is from two separate orders from Book Outlet, because I've ordered at least twice. Uh, from Book Outlet, but I have a couple of the the paper mill classics that I showed, which uh, they're they're just off screen. But I have uh, the Arabian Nights Phantom of the Opera of the paper mill classics, and they sell these really cheap, and they're just so pretty. So I got some more because classics are one area that I do want to read more of, uh, and these are just beautiful books that I think are going to look great on the shelf. So we have Twenty Thousand Leagues Under the Sea by Jules Verne, and just I mean, look at this, look at this beautiful. I love it. We have Last of the Mohicans by James Fenimore Cooper. Once again, and these are like kind of like faux leather, I think. They're, you know, but they're, they just, they're very bright and nice. Uh, we have Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, uh, which is a lot smaller than I thought it would be, to be honest, compared to some of these. Of course, Dracula by Bram Stoker. Also, once again, just very nice. And why not? Because I found out I really love prose. So A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens, uh, who I've heard has really fantastic prose. But these retail uh, from this sticker, it uh, looks like seventeen ninety nine, and they're usually uh, much less than half of that. They sell these, uh, seem to always have men. So I've actually never read any of these books, even Dracula and Frankenstein, believe it or not. Uh, so uh, these definitely, I'm going to have to find a spot, do some rearranging, because I love the way these look, and I think they're going to look awesome on the shelf. So I have to find a spot for them. But um, yeah, it's, classics are one area that I want to throw some more in. And I'll talk a little bit about the next area I want to throw some more in here shortly. Uh, but then the last one in this stack is Gloriana or the Unfulfilled Queen by Michael Moorcock. So Michael Moorcock is an author who's kind of more of a classic fantasy author and one I had heard a lot about. I still do want to read Elric at some point, but... Uh, when I came across one of his books, I've never actually just seen one of his books out and about before, uh, which is one of the reasons I've never read Elric, because I've never come across one. But this is like an alternate telling of Queen Elizabeth I, uh, and it's just based on hearing about him as an author, I didn't actually really read a whole lot more about it, but that's the gist, is alternate Queen Elizabeth, because this is just one of those authors I've been watching out for, because I really want to try his stuff. Uh, Alright, let's move on to the next piece. So first off, I got really lucky at Half Price Books and actually got three Discworld novels that I didn't have yet. 
It's really rare. They get Discworld novels pretty regularly at my half price books, but they're gone like immediately. And a lot of times they're ones I already have. But I needed soul music. I, I don't know how I feel about this cover. Uh, it's better than like the normal US covers. This is a US cover, it's just an old one. Uh, Jingo, which is also this old school US cover. Uh, which, once again, I don't know how I feel about that, but it's better than, like, the new school U.S. covers, which is what this one is, and this is Carpe Jugulum. So this is a witch's one. Jingo is a city watch, and soul music is a death, which, kind of, but the, the tagline on the back of this is sex, dwarfs, and rocks that roll, which, I mean, that would have sold me, even if I wasn't already going to read it, just for the record. But, let's put it on. Those are the three Discworld books, so that gets me just that much closer to having all of them, uh, because as you can see, I have kind of a mishmash. I have quite a few, and I've been working on them, but Soul Music is actually the one that's coming up pretty soon that I didn't have, so I was really, really happy to get that. So then we have uh, Ringworld by Larry Niven, and there you go. This is the other shot I was talking about. Andrew always accuses me of not liking sci-fi because I don't read a lot of sci-fi, Mostly because there's just so much fantasy. Fantasy is my favorite, and so I don't stray from it a ton. I know this is a classic one that's literally about a ring world, and I don't know a ton uh, more about it, but I've heard good things. I just happened to come across this at Half Price Books, so I grabbed it uh, because I figured this would be a good excuse to read a little bit more of sci-fi. And I'm actually going to move around because I want to talk about the other one. I didn't When I picked this up, I didn't realize it was kind of sci-fi, kind of fantasy, but we have the Dark Angel trilogy. Which doesn't sound like sci-fi. Uh, this is by Mer Meredith Ann Pierce. And this is kind of like an older copy. Uh, I don't remember what year it said. I think I looked at the point. Uh, let's see if I can find really quick. 1984, 1990 maybe? So, I don't know, 90s probably. Kind of an older and plain book. But I thought it... it I, I picked it up to take a look because this is like the back... Um, this was in, like, the collectible section of my half-price books, which I don't look at very often. And so this one I was reading about, and the plot of this sounds ridiculous. So it's like, humans colonize the moon, but before they... So they colonize the, mu the moon and, like, bioengineer life. They do terraforming, all your normal stuff when you're colonizing the planet. But the, the life that they bioengineer, some of it's, like, humanoid, and others are, like, they do things out of, like, myth and fantasy, like... Dwarves and vampires and dark angels, and then uh, all of a sudden there's war back on Earth, and so they have to leave, and so there's like some like few people left, like living on kind of like even though they're on the moon in the space age, living in kind of a fantastical world because of these creatures that are created. I don't know. That sounded super awesome. I I never heard of this. I know nothing else about it. That was just me reading uh, the synopsis. If you have read this, please let me know because I'm really excited for this. And if somebody tells me it's super good, I will probably bump it up a lot because uh, that just that plot sounds amazing. So I, I was pretty happy with that pickup. Uh, next up, we were getting close to the end. I promise. Uh, we have the Etched City by K J Bishop. Uh, this is supposed to be kind of just like an interesting, like, um, literary-ish fantasy, but it's like these two rebels, uh, they both go to a big city trying to lead very different lives, and their paths keep, like, intersecting uh, in that way. So this was one that I just kind of picked up as a, a bonus. Uh, we have <laughs> A Brightness Long Ago by Guy Gabriel K, and I picked this up because it says Guy Gabriel K. I should probably stop buying GGK books because I've yet to read one. Uh, but from what I've heard from so many people, I really think they're going to be up my alley. And so I just can't help it. Every time I see a Guy Gabriel K book, I buy it. Next we have, which I almost didn't show this one because I know people are going to tell me I have to read it. But I, I picked up The Gunslinger by Stephen King, the first Dark Tower book. Uh, this was kind of cool. It's illustrated by Michael Whelan. And there's more pictures in it. This is such a short book. I know I could knock this out. I've just been really hesitant because I don't, I don't know that I'm going to like Dark Tower. Uh, I've never really been a huge King fan. I haven't read a ton of his stuff, but I've bits and pieces over the years. So I have it. I'll read it at some point, but I'm probably not going to push it up. And last, but not least, hopefully at least, uh, we have The Red Knight by Miles Cameron, book one of the Traitor Sun Cycle. And this is about like a mercenary knight, basically, 
who uh, takes a job protecting uh, a noble woman, and then it turns into a much bigger thing and like war and whatnot. It just kind of sounded cool. Uh, I like the back of this one actually is slightly more. And it just says, out beyond the walls are creatures who would crack your armor to eat what lies within. So it makes it sound like a medieval western almost. So I thought that seemed pretty interesting too. Uh, but that is it. That is my uh, ridiculous book haul. My book haul videos I found always tend to be way too long. Uh, mostly because there's too many books. Um, <laughs> but that is it for this one. Uh, as always, I try. I really do. I, I end up, whenever I go to half-price books, and this time I hadn't been to half-price books at all, and then I went like twice in a day, and I had been like one other time since then. I was picking up a book for somebody else, and then they responded and I had to go back and get one more, so of course I had to buy more books. For me, that's how it works. And if I just, you know, forget about Book Outlet existing, I do better too, but um, yeah, that, that's this one. There's always more. Um, I do play them. You know, I, I've heard very few people, a couple people are like, oh, I don't like book haul videos, you're never going to read all those. I'm like, I, I seriously plan to. Uh, I'm always behind, you know, buying more books, but it's almost every book I buy I'm getting a good deal on. Uh, and so that's the thing. If I have books, like I had books when I used to buy like anything I could get my hands on because I would just read it because I uh, couldn't really afford to get a lot of books and I didn't live near anywhere I could get cheap ones. I would buy a lot of miscellaneous books, and if it's something I don't think I'm ever going to read, A, I don't buy it, B, if I already have it, I don't haul it. So, there we go. But, that has been this book haul. Let me know about any of these books, if you have them and want to read them, or if you have read any of them, uh, what are your thoughts, anything I should bump up, specifically Dark Angel Trilogy, let me know. I'm super curious on that one. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like. Uh, don't forget to check the link in the description for the Wizardly Duo Discord if you want to talk any of these books, any other books, any all kinds of other stuff. Uh, it's it's a madhouse there some days, so there's there's all kinds of discussion, but we'd love to have you uh, join in the conversation there. And of course, if you'd like to see more of my content, make sure to subscribe.